Well, welcome to the show, folks. Today, we have a, a guest on who is a friend of mine, and most of the people who come on the show are voluntarious philosopher types who are official, uh, professional philosopher kind of people. Bryce is just, he's a cowboy philosopher, let's put it that way, a brilliant and funny dude, but he's not kind of stuck his head up in the glass tower of philosophy, or he doesn't claim to have. Thanks for being on today, Bryce. Oh, man, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. So you are uh, at home today, not working, I take it? No, I've got a few things to do around the house today, but uh, I scored a little time uh, away to hang out with you, buddy. Cool, I like it. You built a, you, I, you mentioned something about you just built a shop or something like that? Oh, Lord. Yeah, um, to know me is to love me when it comes to my carpentry skills. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I have none. And so... <laughs> The wife chomped at the bit and uh, got a guy to come over to do that for me. But now I'm hanging all my cabinets and stuff. And uh, it looks a little bit like Blue's Clues in there. My cabinets are all different directions. and uh, <laughs> But it's coming along wonderfully. Well, nice. And then once it's done, you'll have a, a cool place that you can make a mess out of. and uh, just That's right. It, I'm working on the Man Cave Edition right now. <laughs> I like it. Well, uh Tell us, uh, tell our, our audience, if you would, please, a bit about you. Like, uh, you're from the Rocky Mountain area, like I am. We, we live somewhere near each other. We're over a mountain or two from each other. Um, yeah. What has been your professional career? What are your hobbies? That kind of thing. Uh, my professional career, uh, I started in the bar business about, uh, oh gosh, 34 years ago, 35 years ago. And I was in the bar business for uh, about 20 years. Uh, my position varied from, uh, managing the bar. Uh, but when I started, I was a bar back low man on the totem pole. Uh, then I moved to bartending and watching the door. And then I moved to managing the bar. Um, when my career ended there, I got into the security business and I work for a private golf and residential area now, uh, run their security department. It's a, it's a really good gig. Uh, it, it's challenging because of my clients. Uh, and when it comes down to hobbies, man, I love to fish. I love being outdoors. Love to shoot. Uh, and you're right on philosophy, my good man. I uh, I don't know where I am on philosophy. It comes and goes. It 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 wanes and waxes. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. And aren't you into gold mining also? Or uh... I really yeah. like gold panning, man. And uh, I've got an affinity for a hole in the ground anywhere, man. I'll stop and I'll dig something up, and I just I can't help myself. Yeah. You know, and I used to do that, and I kind of found out, I talked to geologists recently, and he's like, well, there's not even a reason to spend two minutes panning right here, just the geology of the area. There isn't going to be any gold. Well, and I just keep thinking that there's got to be some vein that I'm guessing is about eight inches thick, and it runs about four feet high, and nobody's found it yet and doesn't know it there. it's there, but I'm yeah. going to follow the flakes uh, upstream, and I'm going to find it. Have you found that one yet, or? No, I haven't found that one yet. And I've spoken to geologists too. Uh, it, it's kind of funny. I got the same thing as you. I know one of these days I'm going to be stumbling around somewhere and I'm going to find that quartz vein and we are going to be billionaires, dude. I love it. I love it. Uh, yeah. You know, I've actually had my best luck panning um, by taking a little vial. You can buy online the flake gold. And if yeah. I take that out and kind of dump it in the pan, then I can get, once I'm slush, I can get like half of it back. So you know, I'm pretty good at that too. Success. I'm, I'm pretty good at that too. That is my best success. <laughs> I've, uh, I've only found a couple flakes out in the wild myself, uh, but I'm looking forward to maybe doing a little nugget shooting here uh, uh, pretty close to where we are and see if I can't find a nugget somewhere. I, that, that's my goal is to find one nugget. Awesome. And how do you do that? Is it just by digging from the side of the bank and tossing it in a pan and slushing or more or less, or you, you can use um, uh, metal detectors and you hook up with a metal detector and you just go out. You, first of all, you've got to be in a cold bearing area. Uh, like my backyard, we're not going to have any luck. Uh, your backyard, we're not going to have any luck. Uh, but, but it's out there. I mean, we're, we're not that far away from it. So I'm going to I'm going to get a really nice one uh, metal detector and I'm going to get after it. I I need to learn that. Uh, so that's what I aspire to do. That's awesome. That's awesome. There was a guy who actually did a fun treasure hunting thing uh, that used to be in our area, 
he would go out with his metal detector and his thing was to be a detective, a, a sleuth. He would look in the, uh, the historical records for where the homesteads were in the old days. And then he would go to the homestead area and he would look around and say, okay, if I was an old timer here and I had a few silver coins, where would I bury him? Maybe up that little draw right there. And then he would go and metal detect. And he had a little bit of success, not, you know, not didn't get rich, but I right. that was a fun little sleuthing thing to do too as an old gumshoe that was cool yeah there's a guy on uh on youtube who does that um primarily around uh the state of nevada and uh i don't know whereabouts he's from but he's always hitting nevada and all the old ghost towns and all the old stage stops and this guy is super diligent when it comes to doing his homework uh i have the attention of a chihuahua on mountain dew man so i start doing uh i start doing a little uh research and next thing you know i'm looking at something else so I, I just, I, I don't know. I, I think my, uh, I think my ability at being successful with that is going to be uh, limited, but, but I'm going to give it out. <laughs> yeah. You know what? That attention span thing. I get that too. I'm like, Oh, that's interesting. I should look up a metal detector. And before you know it, I'm shopping for bulldozer blades. And I, bulldozer. <laughs> how'd this happen? <laughs> yeah, it happens to me all the time, brother. I don't know. <laughs> so back in your old bar days, um, did you have any cool fun stuff that happened any famous people you had to throw out or anything like that uh man the the, the, the stories are many uh let me see we've got the one of the most impressive people that i met personally uh was marvin hagler and uh the former boxer and um just just cool as a cucumber uh i've met uh uh not Yogi Berra. Um, God, uh, now I forgot his name, and I'm a baseball guy. I'll, I'll tell you somebody, this, this is a pretty good story. Uh, before I paid any attention to hockey, uh, there was a guy that used to show up, and he had, he would always have different kinds of celebrities with him. And, and, and I don't know what his job was, maybe babysitter to the rich and famous, I don't know. Um, but anyhow, he brought in all these guys. And there were like nine of them. It was a Sunday afternoon. It was me, the bar back, and the bartender. And these nine guys are all big guys. They're, they're all three inches taller than me and about the same weight. And they are cranked up. And I let the doorman go home. I let the cocktail waitress go home. So there's just three of us there. And these guys are flying off the hook. And I'm looking at my bar back, making sure that if I wade into this, you know, he's going to at least come and grab the carcass. And, uh, <laughs> it, it just keeps escalating and escalating and escalating. Finally, I'm getting ready to go over and say something, and the bar back waves me over. And I said, what's up? And he goes, do you know who that is? And I go, no, I don't care, but he's getting ready to leave. And he said, that's Tony Twist from the St. Louis Blues. He said, he, he's he's their goon. And he said, and that guy is Chris Chelios, and that guy is this guy. It was a whole bunch of goons from hockey teams, NHL hockey teams. Wow. And I, yeah, and I went, oh boy, isn't this gonna be fun? <laughs> Me against nine hockey goons. This is gonna be this is gonna be great. Here's where I die, you know, write my wife and kids, please. Uh so anyhow, I I, I walked up to this guy and I said, you know, hey, look, man, I, I know you're kind of in charge of these guys. We gotta do something. And he said, What do we gotta do? And I said, You gotta cool them big bastards out. They're uh <laughs> they're, they're they're too hyper, they're too big, they're too hyper. Uh I, I don't I don't have a hyper button. I'm either on or off, and, and right now I'm not cranked up, but I'm getting there. We don't need to get there. Let's get these guys out of here. And so the guy says, oh, hold on. Let me introduce you to Tony. So I went, you know, I, I, I don't want to be introduced. I, I, I want him outdoors. Outdoors is where he belongs, <laughs> and, and I want to live through this. So, you know, let's go. And I wasn't really paid to fight. I was kind of paid to stop fights. And this guy, all he does is ride a bike to stay in shape and beat the shit out of people. So, I mean, <laughs> this isn't going to bode well for me. And, and I know it. Well, anyhow, Tony Twist comes over and he goes, are you the proprietor? And I said, no, I'm just the manager, man. And he said, well, I'm really sorry. And he said, uh, you know, we're, we're here. We're doing this thing. It's a big charity run that I do every year. And uh, he said, we're going a different route. We're going into my hometown in Canada, but we're going from St. Louis to that direction. And I said, all right. And he said, here, let me take care of everybody. He tries to give me a hundred bucks. I said, no, 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 I don't want your hundred bucks. So he walked over to the bartender and the, and the, uh, the bar back, tipped each one of them a hundred bucks. And they hit the road. So that was as close as I've come to dying, I think. Uh, <laughs> but I got to shake that man's hand. That's and I got cool. to tell you, athletes have the biggest hands in the world. I don't know what it is. 
Every pro athlete that I've ever shaken hands with has giant hands. And I, I've got pretty good sized mitts. Yeah, you uh, have V hooks. Yeah, but not compared to these guys. Holy cow. <laughs> so th there was that. That was probably the, mo the most fun, but the most aggravating at the same time. Right. Uh, right. Proceed. Go ahead. I actually encourage people when I have a, a new employee who is a little bit on the naive side, um, just don't really understand the world. <clears throat> I encourage them, hey, go get a job at a bar. I know this is not your ultimate oh. thing, but go get a job as a bouncer and learn how to deal with people. And when they're at their drunkest, they're at their most honest. It, well, and that's actually been a, a theory of mine. Tell me if this is right. You've been around way more drunk people than I have. My theory is that alcohol is pretty much a truth serum. If a person, you know, say, say oh, she's, she's a... Uh, She's a slut when she's drunk or he's a jerk when he's drunk. Well, no, she's a slut always. And he's a jerk always, except they hide it really well <laughs> until they take the truth serum. Is that true? Or am I just imagining stuff? No, I'm with you hundred percent on that. Um, I, I know a lot of great people who, when they're completely stone cold sober, they're, they're a joy to be around, uh, you know, add liquor. And all of a sudden you have instant asshole, um, you know, and it's, it's, it's a lot to deal with. Uh, and I think that's a great idea. You meet somebody who wants a little education, get a job in a bar. Uh, that is the best education I ever had in my life. It was a 20 year long education and I learned almost everything I know in the bar. So I'm, I'm grateful for the folks that hired me for that. Uh, but my departure was a little less than uh, anticipated, we'll say. <laughs> but now you're happily thriving. That's cool. Yeah, everything is wonderful now. I can't believe uh, things are going so well. They should. I deserve it. But well, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so what? And I mentioned that you're not like a. You don't claim to be some deep thinking philosopher. But I, I've I've seen some of your social media posts, and I've talked to you enough that you are a smart guy and a deep thinker. What are some of your the things you think worldviews you hold that are pretty dang different than most of our neighbors around here? Oh man, that's a great question. I, uh, I don't know. I, you know, the, the, the world is a complicated place. And when you bring it down to just our nation, our nation is also a very complicated place. Uh, we've, we've got way too many working parts and, you know, I, I don't want to get into how government works and all that stuff. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm not a big fan of the way we normally present ourselves to the world. Um, you know, I, I, me, I like to worry about me. Uh, that's my job is to worry about me and, and myself and, and my friends to some extent. Um, you know, I, I believe we're all free entities and we can all go do and wish as we please, just as long as it's not, uh, you know, damaging anybody else. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe that is too simplified. I I, I don't know, but, but, but I try to live by that. That, you know what? That makes good sense. And it's, I actually just did a video within the last week about a podcast about is libertarianism too simplistic because people will say, well, every, if you think you can boil it down to just a third grade level of, well, don't hurt anybody else and treat them nicely. And, and I would argue that that philosophy is very simple, but it also makes great sense. Like there's no, no I agree a hundred percent. I agree a hundred percent. And the simplicity of it is the beauty. I mean, Treat people the way you want to be treated. That was something my grandma told me when I was four or five years old, you know, and, and it's always stuck with me. And I, I don't know why we can't do that. And I don't know why when somebody has a, a differing opinion than you do, that these days it ends up being a knockdown drag out fight. And all of a sudden you're the, you're the enemy, uh, which had never been the case up until this point. But now that we're discussing this, I'm the enemy all of a sudden. I, I, I don't understand that. And I, I do my best to work away from that, but, uh, you know, the, the, the COVID thing, uh, brought up a lot of interaction through social media with, with friends and family and, and people that I knew. And, uh, I've lost a few of those folks, um, you know, and maybe, maybe when we're talking person to person, we can hash things out a little bit better because we can see each other's emotions and things like that. Social media, you cannot, uh, as you're well aware. And uh, I, I, I've had a, I've had a few people really go haywire on me. People that I didn't think were capable of doing it, and uh, basically told me to, you know, piss off and do something else. And I, I'm fine with that. Uh, you know, I'll piss off, but you get to tell me that once. 
And <laughs> ah, you, you, I tell like to, that. you tell me piss off and by God, I'll go piss off and don't come back. And, and, and believe me, I won't come back to you. Now I know all about you. And maybe I'm too stubborn in those regards. Maybe, maybe I should work on that. But uh, I don't know. It seems like it works. And once again, it's the simplicity in this. You tell me to piss off. Well, okay, I piss off. Bye. Yep. Yeah. Doesn't have to be made too much more complicated, does it? No. And, and honestly, you, you really don't even need to say anything. You just you block them or just don't interact with them anymore. Move on. Life is too short for complications, man. Way too short for complications. I agree. And it seems like a, the the whole association thing, who it is we cho- choose to associate with, boy, that does just make stuff easy. If, if somebody's a, a poison or an energy sucker or just isn't fun, um, isn't adding value to your life, uh, right. why, why mess with that crap? You don't need that. No. And that was one of the interesting things about the bar business too. Everybody, you know, the, a, a bar is a melting pot. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a microchasm of our country. And you get people from all over the world there. And, you know, the, the people that worked for me and the people that I worked for were from all over the world. We all did different things and we're all interested in different things. And somehow at the end of the day, the staff, for the most part, ended up being very congruent from, from the day to the next day to the next day to the next day. The, the clients, on the other hand, were different. You know, it's a revolving door. And almost everybody that just wanted to come in and have a good time was able to do that, regardless of race, ethnicity, religious background. And none of that mattered until it seems like now. Now it matters. And we don't have, I don't have time for that. I, I've got other things to do. Yep. Yep. And it's, you know, there, it seems that this is being, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, but it seems like there's, there are a group of folks who are trying to kind of shove it in their face and bring it to a head. Like, I don't really care what color a person is. I see color and I bet you're the same. I'll bet you if I lined up 10 people and four of them were black, I'll bet you could pick them out in a heartbeat. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm pretty quick like that. Yeah. So like, yeah, I see color, but I don't care. Like it, okay. it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. It, and I, I think until I'm told, Hey, that person is worth more than the other six or right. until the, the, the person who's gay, I don't care if you're gay. Well, how this even come into the conversation? Like, why right. do I even know this about you? Like, I thought we were hanging out pan and gold. Um, right. Are we going to start talking about our, our, lifestyle I, I don't know who cares yeah. until it's shoved in my face the opposite direction uh, and right. then it's like well i still don't care but yeah it's interesting you know, th- th- this is interesting and i'm about I'm the gay thing um I, i'm ra- well i raised a son who was gay and uh and it was pretty obvious early on that he was gay this little guy loved share when he was two years old a share video would come on and his start dancing around the living room and was like oh my god and i was kind of a you know i was the big scary guy i was a big redneck i had a mullet cowboy hat cowboy boots i worked at a bar and i threw people out if you got out of line with me and tried to beat me up i beat you up uh so probably not the most ideal role model for a gay child uh it was probably frightening in fact and uh you know it my my wife and i had to have a discussion and uh, i think it was one of those and it was it was Totally organic the way it came around. But I had a lot of friends that were very like-minded, that were big guys. And uh, she she just asked it. She said, you know, what are you going to do if one of your friends, you know, if it is indeed gay, what are you going to do if one of those people have an objection to him? And it's like, well, then I object to them. This is, this is my child, and he's always going to be my child. And I don't care what he is. I don't, I don't care what religion he falls into. It, it, you know, this isn't ideal for me. Life is hard. Being gay makes it harder. I'm fully aware of that. Uh, all I can do is support this kid 100%. And that's all I've ever done. And my son and I have a great relationship. Now, I, I'm sure I've done things and said things that have scared him or have been a little off-putting. Um, but, you know, it, it wasn't intentional. And, you know, one of the things that I'm really most fortunate about, Shepard, is as I've gotten older, I, I, I keep growing, man. And, and there's things that I never once put a, a dime worth of effort on whether I should accept or not, you know, accept or not accept. And uh, why not accept everything, man, and just take it for what it's worth, digest it a little bit. And if it works for you, it works for you. Um, as for being gay, well, being gay doesn't work for me. Um, although I'm, I'm happily married 32 years this year, 
Uh, my marriage hasn't really, well, I, I won't say it hasn't costed me anything. Anytime we go on vacation, uh, I end up buying two purses and neither one of them fit my, my, you know, you know my outfit. Um, but it's just, uh, you know, it, the, 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 the gay thing has always been uh, an interesting subject for me. Uh, I'm very, very proud of my son. He, he left, he left the house when he was 18 years old and, uh, has never once asked for money. You know, he, he's a go-getter. He gets out there and gets it done. And I may not appreciate what he's doing for a living right now, uh, but he's still young. He can reinvent himself. I reinvented myself at the age of 40, right? So anybody can do it. Uh, and, and he's certainly smart enough. So everything's going to be fine, dude. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I, I recall, <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, Bryce uh, is a blogger and he's a, uh, what, what's the name of the blog? Wyoming Humorist? Uh, yes, my I'll put a, favorite humorist. I'll put a link down below. What is the article? My favorite blog post about uh, being your son being in college and comes home and he has the big news to tell you, and you were worried that maybe he was gay or knocked somebody up or something like. Uh, you remember the name of that article? I, I can't remember the name of it. I'll have to go back and look, but I remember the story well. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of funny. My my younger son, both of my kids are complete opposites. Uh, I always tell people I have one of each and they say, oh, you've got a boy and a girl. And it's like, no, I've got a gay kid and a straight kid. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, that normally makes them laugh. And then I say, you know, or else I'll say I've got one of each. I've got a vegan and uh, and a carnivore. And it doesn't run the way you think it does. My my hippie kid is the my straight kid is the. uh He's, he's a straight kid and he's the vegan. So my, my gay kid, if you put a T-bone steak in front of that kid, it is gone, man. It ain't got a chance. <laughs> uh, so anyhow, that story was kind of funny. Whenever my youngest son approaches me as pop, I know everything's going okay. And whenever he addresses me as dad, it gets a little scary. <laughs> and so, and I just picked up on this through the years, you know, big brain on Bryce. I, I he came home and he said, yeah. And I said, what? And I thought, holy shit, this thing's going to come on court. And it was the first time he came home and he said, you know, I got something to tell you. And I went, oh, God damn. You know, he, he's robbed a bank. Uh, he, he's knocked up, the, you know, half the cheerleaders. You know, what is going on? And he, he said, you wouldn't believe how many girls are on this school campus. <laughs> and I went, yeah, I would, son. It's I mean, it, it's a big, it, it's a college campus. And, you know, I, I hadn't known this. And if you find the article, please read it. It's a lot funnier than I could present it right now. <laughs> but I couldn't believe it. And then when you look at it, you know, he grew up in a very small town. He knew everybody his age and two years older and three years younger. And it was the same kids for 18 years. And so he gets to a college campus and he says, man, I've already got a girlfriend and she's really cute. And she's a vegetarian dad. And I went, well, you hate vegetables. So what are you doing? He goes, no, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be a vegetarian. And I was like, this shit ain't going to work, dude. I mean, you, <laughs> you, you eat cheese pizza is all you eat. You're, you're going to have to take the cheese off it. No, I'll eat cheese. It'll be okay, dad. And you know, now he's an adult and he's been a vegan for Christ's sakes for like the last five or six years. He's involved with another really nice girl who's a vegan. And, uh, you know, he, he somehow does it. He, he drinks a little bit, but, uh, you know, Bourbon is vegan, so you're you're good. So is beer. <laughs> well, that's so cool. You know, you, you look at what we want in life, and isn't it kind of neat now that we're I don't know we're not in our sunset years, but we're over well over halfway through with our lives. Yeah. And isn't it cool to look and and say, hey, we reared some cool kids, and they've got their stuff going on, and it's it's like that's kind of a good satisfying thing for a for a pa or for a pop or a dad to to think. No, it is. You know, I, I know what kind of kid I was growing up and I know I kind of, I did some things that would, well, it might not shock my parents, but they would be very disappointed. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I thought of these things, you know, growing up and, you know, I did this shit. So I know my kids are probably going to do it. And, uh, you know, to have them come full circle, you know, go through being a teenager is, you know, just a train wreck. I mean, you know, you, you have no idea who you are. You have no identity. Uh, your, your friends are, you know, far and wide and you bounce around from groups of friends to friends to friends till you isolate it down and you got a core group. I was just very fortunate with my kids that th that core group 
that my kids, you know, one of my boys ended up hanging out with were the ones are still great friends with today, you know, and they all kind of, they all gravitated the same direction. So I'm, I'm really proud of that. And, you know, one of my worst fears was you know, I'm, I'm going to raise an ax murderer. And uh, I, I mean, I, I just, I mean, th- to me in my little head, there's a 50, 50 chance of that. And uh, <laughs> thank God I got the thicker 50, 50 on that one. But uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's amazing how our, our kids, it's amazing how we did it. Both of us, man, we did it. Woo. Yep. Yep. It's a good, good, satisfying, cool thing. It is a good thing. So what is your, uh, what is your future hold? You're going to keep writing your blog occasionally. You're going to keep securing the golf course and clients. And, uh, I imagine you're going to keep being married to your awesome wife and being a great dad. What else is, is your uh, future hold? You know, well, our immediate future has a little bit of travel in it. Um, but, but yeah, I, I think you're right. I'm going to stay the course. Uh, I really do, do enjoy writing, and I've been trying to write a book about my experience in the bar business. And uh, I, I've had a friend uh, who's an attorney who has guided me a little bit, and his guidance has, has put me on the back burner. Um, I, I realize how easy it is to be sued, and if you portray anybody in what uh, could be mistaken as a less than fair light, uh, they're probably going to come after you. Uh, sad news for them is I got nothing. I got my coffee cup and a broken pair of glasses they can have uh, <laughs> that's about it but uh yeah I, i'm gonna write a little bit more um and, and i would like to pursue a book uh <laughs> believe it or not maybe a kid's book i i've thought about that uh you know they're, 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 yeah, my, my wife is in the other room and she just chuckled uh it's gonna be <laughs> it'll be filled with f-bombs maybe it won't be a kid's book but maybe it'll be maybe it'll be fronted as a child's book but once you start reading it, it will be, uh, it will have adult language and uh, probably very poor uh, graphics drawn by me. Uh, so, so we'll see. I mean, it, it's wide open, Shep. I, I, I try not to have a, uh, I try not to have an itinerary, man. I'd rather fly by the seat of my pants when it comes to that stuff. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing, man. I'm going to stay the course. I think keep writing, uh, keep meeting new people. Uh, keep being a good guy, uh, surround myself with decent people and, uh, distance myself from the people that are pains in the ass. That sounds like a, a pretty good life philosophy right there. Yes, sir. Well, before we close, is there anything else you'd like to add or toss out there or direct people to, uh, I'll, I'll put a link to your blog down below in the description. Uh, anything else you want to, uh, let our audience know? No, I'd just like to say thanks for having me on. It, it has been a lot of fun. We ought to do it again one day. Uh, you know, I wish you continued success, man, and everything you do. Uh, I really look up to you. Uh, I enjoy hanging out with you. Uh, I enjoy discussing philosophy with you, although you do all the talking and I do all the listening. But <laughs> I, I really enjoy it, man. And, and thanks for being my friend. I appreciate you. Hey, same back at you. Thanks for being on, Bryce. Take care. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you.